it is time to start sanding back the panels of Nigel. We're doing the front end first and then we'll do the rest of him once the engine is in him and we can actually move him. Prepping a paint job is such a mammoth task, so we just have to get stuck straight into it. Hopefully, I don't make a mess <laughs> of mum and dad's garage, but I think I might be doing alright. So, I've got both wing fenders, the little front skirt in front of the radiator, the radiator panel itself, and the bonnet to do. We'll see how we go today. I'm probably going to start with the smallest piece just to see exactly how it all goes with any overspray. Hopefully it's all sort of like held really well inside the box. And then obviously there will be overspray for sure, but at least if that way I've made it real tight on it, I'm hoping that it encapsulates it and doesn't let it just sort of continue to drift. But I've managed to nip it up pretty well. For the paints, I'm going with the same stuff I painted the inside of Nigel with because I was, again, so impressed with how that turned out as well. Everything through BCS Auto Paints, um, as well as the primer as well. So obviously I've got to prime everything first. Uh, I was speaking to one of their correspondents that ended up talking me through what I could and couldn't do, what would be the best for my situation. I'm not looking for showroom quality. I love a rugged look of a Land Rover and honestly, I would have kept Nigel the way he is, dents, stings and all, if it wasn't for the fact that I tried to have like a lot of touch up paint and miscolored paint that's been added on top. I think that looks way worse than just like rough damage and wear. If it wasn't for that, I probably would have kept it all just the same. But for the sake of this, I just want it to be at least all one really uniform color and nice and protected again. Benny like starting of like any sort of corrosion on the aluminium, obviously way more resilient than stainless, but there are a couple of bits on the wings that are sort of like, you can see it starting to wanna get a couple of little pits in it. So nip that in the bud. I'll be starting from scratch to make sure that basically we've got a uniform color. I'm not really concerned about putting any dents and dings in it once we use it. These cars are meant to be used, but I'm just really excited about just starting fresh and hopefully I do an okay job. I'm not expecting amazing stuff, but I was so blown away with how well the inside turned out when we painted white with the same auto body paint. I figured this should turn out pretty damn well as well. So here's hoping. Just the primer for now, so let's get into it. All right, I've been pretty busy. <laughs> it works a treat actually, but I'm so stoked. So I've primed one side of the wings. I've primed one wing, and just to see the comparison, they were both basically the same in which the holes were patched where the uh, axe and shovel mounts were. And now they've come up with a nice lick of primer on there. It's actually, you can't see it at all. And it's come up really nice and uniform. So I'm so pleased with that. It's been coming out great. So far, I haven't had any messes, which is beautiful. I'm sure to keep spending more time in there and hopefully don't die from the fumes. I am wearing a mask though. So that'll help. We've got this to go. We bought another side panel for the wing because our one was pretty crumpled and had some corrosion around one of the vents. So that's already primed and ready to go, which is great. So one less thing for me to do. I think I just have the radiator skirt. I've already coated the radiator panel with rust bullet as well because it was showing signs of like flaky paint, some corrosion, and some rust in some of the welds. A replacement panel is like a thousand bucks, which is kind of inappropriate right now when we can just treat it with rust bullet. But then obviously I'm going to want to make sure it comes up really nicely too. So I'll probably prime that just to make sure that it adheres better because I'm not 100% sure how well Rust Bullet acts as a true primer for two-pack paint. But so far it's going really smoothly, which is great. So time to get stuck into this guy. Looking good. 
stoked with that. All right, with those pieces primed, given them plenty of time to dry, I've had a nice day's rest myself. <laughs> but now it's time to actually do the color, which you're most nervous about, as it is the final coats that we need to do to actually get it looking good. One of the main reasons I wanted to go with BCS paints is that they actually do aerosol two-pack paint and it's mixed to the exact color code of the vehicle. So whatever color code you have, they should be able to mix it up. They're able to do a 40 year old Land Rover. So I mean, that's a massive plus for me. So it means I know I'm getting a perfect color match that's correct for Nigel, for Land Rovers, for the series, which is great. And the fact that it's two pack means that it's actually gonna be a solid automotive paint. It's not just painting it to look good and it'll chip off and not be as protective as a two pack. Um, so, that's a massive thing for me. I was looking into originally doing proper compressor gun, but the thing, the more and more I looked into it, the more nervous I was because there's so much room for user error, particularly when it comes to making the correct mixture yourself, and then also making sure the gun setup's perfect, so the right PSI, um, the right hole outlet for an even spray. I've just like, there were so many variables that I feel like without having experience at all, I either would have gone through heaps of paint testing or I could have messed up on the pieces, which I really didn't want to do. So at least with the cans, I set off the catalyst in the bottom. It's then a two pack and the spray nozzles were really good last time I used um, these same paints as well, which meant I'm sort of removing those variables that I could mess up, not being a trained sprayer. Um, so I couldn't really go past this option and it's still like really affordable as well Considering you are basically getting a top-notch paint job if you just follow the steps and go nice and slowly So got a pretty big day of painting ahead of me. I'll see you in a couple of hours Wish me luck So, not perfect, but they've come up pretty well. I think I might be pushing it a bit with the humidity at the moment because we are in the middle of summer in Coffs Harbour and there's been like a fair bit of rain about. I know we're not supposed to really be doing it if it's like too humid, which is kind of frustrating because I don't really have much of a choice with time of year and the forecast for the foreseeable future. We sort of do need to get it done. So there's like a couple of like little dimples and whatnot, but I think that's more to do with humidity and how I'm applying it more than anything. But in terms of like solid coverage and adhesion, it looks really nice. So if I can at least get most of the panels done to this point, and hopefully I just keep getting better at applying it too. As a whole, it went on really, really nicely. So can't really complain. And hopefully I'll just keep getting better as long as this humidity doesn't get worse. Pretty clean to me. Here we are. Pretty damn happy with that. So for anyone else that's going to paint, I'd advise wearing shoes, otherwise you might be rocking some nice two-pack nail polish and it just doesn't want to come off. <laughs> so. I don't know, I might be setting some trends here with some Bahama Gold toenail polish for the guys, but maybe I'll wear shoes next time. Oh yeah. Just making sure it's not like flooding in or whatever. Whoa! Sorry, I thought you were holding it. I am. Oh yeah, right. I didn't realize it was coming off all the way. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell. You ready? Yeah. Oh, can you scratch the back of my head? Right. Down. Up. Thank you. <laughs> nice, we did it. So. 
I've got to undo these guys. That one isn't the worst. That one's the worst. I might have to get a grinder on it and who knows what else. Thankfully, this side is actually half decent. So now the question begs, do I start with the easy one? Or do I start with a hard one and then finish on the easy one? Thinking that they're easy, they might not be. I don't know. <laughs> Decided to opt for the easy one. Cause I feel like it'd be nice to start with a win. <laughs> I feel like anyone that's worked on old cars or anything like this can appreciate that sentiment. Oh. <laughs> it's not what I had in mind. Oh, that was easier than I thought. God damn. Alright. Alright. That's great. Good start. Now, if anyone has tips for how to get these to limit rusting. I'm all ears. I have a feeling it's just more the fact that the seals in here are so bad that they just took on so much water and just trickled straight down. So I'm hoping with these new glazed windows, they look far better, which means in theory, the less should go down. My door was the worst and that's why it's also the most rusted. So I can only think that that's the reason, but if anyone's got any other tips, let me know. Oh, well, this might be a bit of a, an issue, mightn't it? Pretty easy start. Decided to call in a longer bar for this one so I can get a little bit more torque on it. Beautiful. Whew, that's hot. Now I think. For this one, it's so bad that I might actually just grind the end off and then hopefully the thread that the nut's actually on isn't completely screwed. So if I just grind the end off, it means that it doesn't have to travel that far to come off and it doesn't have to work through all that extra gunk because that is completely rotted. So I might just nip that off just to make my life easier and hopefully it does make my life more easier preemptively. The paint booth finally been put away. <laughs> oh man, that was actually like a pretty massive few days. I mean, obviously if, if it was a huge space, I could have done like all of them at each stage easier, but because it was sort of, I'd take one or two panels in, prime it, leave it, prime it, leave it, prime it, leave it, paint, leave it, paint, leave it. it just sort of, then I've got to wait for it to be fully, fully, fully nice and hard and cured before I can even pick it up, awkwardly move it out of the space, then bring in the new one and start all over again. So I prolonged that whole process massively. The bigger the booth you can make, the better, obviously, or call around and ask if there are any paint booths in the area that will let you use it on a weekend. I'm gonna go into more detail when we have to paint the back end of Nigel as to the specific sort of steps that I found made the painting turn out better. 
uh, because I'm sure there's still a little bit more to learn, but like the last few pieces, particularly the doors, really started finishing way, way better. And again, it's all, it was all just more to do with me. The humidity probably didn't help, but I think almost entirely was just me basically figuring it out. Um, for now, still tossing up how we're gonna do the back end. I've got a ring around. If anyone happens to be in the Coffs area, kind of mid North Coast area, and has a paint booth that they want to just like lend me for a bit, that'd be cool. Um, <laughs> otherwise, I think we're gonna have to get like a marquee sort of thing and plonk it over the top of him and paint that way. It's not ideal, but I think we'll still be able to encapsulate it all, um, hopefully. Otherwise, we'll have to, if we can get a paint booth, we'll wait till everything's all reassembled. So the engine's back in, all the panels are put back on, then we can drive him to a paint place and then finish the back end and the roof. But for now, we've got the dashboard to do. I haven't done the bulkhead yet either, which is only gonna be a portion of it, but that'll sort of be, I've got to wait for a good day or two of weather. I've got to do that outside. So I'll be priming painting and then also rust bulleting in. But for now, I'm just really relieved that that leg of the painting's done and there wasn't too many issues. <laughs> mm -hmm. 